Hey, it's Aaron, and today we're gonna do a shaky cam interior walkthrough in a 2023 Infiniti QX60. Uh, this vehicle was completely redone last year. I think I did a walk around review last year, uh, but I didn't do an interior. Uh, this year I did both. Uh, so either way it's covered. So you'll see the walk around video linked down below. Uh, and yeah, let's just get started. This is a pretty good vehicle. Uh, Infinity did a good job. This is one of those vehicles that tends to get overlooked. Infinity itself kind of gets overlooked. Um, they're having a tough time marketing uh, given the number of luxury brands that there are and the fact that Infinity doesn't have anything that jumps out. Um, everything they do is pretty straightforward and it looks good and it's comfortable and luxurious but it doesn't have anything that just leaps at you. Um, you know, they don't have Matthew McConaughey in their commercials. Uh, they don't They don't have a, a reputation for sportiness and going fast or any of that. So, uh, but shouldn't be overlooked. It's a great brand. Uh, this is one of their better vehicles too. It's, it's pretty new. Um, like I said, it came out last year. So let's walk around it. I'll show you the interior here, some wonderful quilting and other stuff. Let's check it out. So as always, we start on the left side. Up here, you got the door handle, physical lock. Here's your seat memories up here. And then down here is door locks, side mirrors, including the uh, fold right here. This folds them in manually. And then you have your windows right here and window lock at the bottom. This has the Bose Performance Series stereo in it, and it is beauty in this car, beauty. Uh, I'll talk more about that later. Over here is first to the vents. You can see how it turns on, uh, how you adjust it here, move it around right there. And then down below that, this is your lane keeping uh, assist. So it's kind of hard to explain, but basically when you push this, um, you can turn steering assist on and off when cruise control is running. So uh, I'll show you that, sort of. This uh, just turns on and off the, the head up display, and then this opens the rear hatch. Down there, you can see the uh, front, or the, what do you, why am I having a hard time with words? There you go, the hood. That's the hood latch release, uh, and some pedals. So we go to the steering wheel. Um, I'll talk about cruise control based on this steering wheel when we get to that side. Let's start on the left. Over here on the left, you have your volume controls. This is your track or station. This chooses what menu you're on um, in the driver information screen. And this controls the driver information screen. Uh, so you see you have a back button and then a left, right, and an okay, and then you can spin this up and down. I'll show you what's on the that when we get to the instrument cluster. Over here, is cruise control stuff but first let's talk about down here is voice control which is okay it's it it's a kind of that clunky walk you through the menu thing but it's pretty okay this is telematics uh so you can use this to bluetooth your phone by the way so if you don't have your phone set up you can just hit this and it'll walk you through the bluetooth menus and then over here is your following distance when you have cruise control on so adaptive cruise following distance here this is, Infinity has a name for it. Nissan calls it Pro Pilot. I don't remember what Infinity calls it. But uh, this is regular cruise control uh, or regular adaptive cruise control. But you can also do lane centering, which is what that button over there was for. Uh, you can also turn it on and off using the driver information screen over there. So when you push this and turn it on, it will prompt you and leave the prompt up there and down in the corner so that you can push this and then uh, select to have the uh, lane keeping or the lane centering on and then you or you can turn off same same difference so pretty cool setup i really like this um, and then this works really really well so it just follows the lanes keeps you in the middle of it we did a little road trip and it 
kept it really well while there were some fairly high winds, about 40 mile an hour winds, uh, crosswinds pushing the car, and it held that pretty good. And then your usual cruise control stuff here. So you have set, resume, uh, cancel, and then you up and down to change the speeds. This has paddle shifters. I don't know why, but it does. Nine speed automatic transmission. Okay, over here is uh, your washer wipers. So this knob right here runs the back. You can see it's off, intermittent, and full. And then you push this back. So you push the whole hand, the whole dongle back uh, to squirt the back. If you're using the rear view mirror, um, actually, yeah, I'll just talk about it now because I already brought it up. So if you're doing the rear view mirror like I do with the camera instead of the standard mirror right then uh you'll need to wash the back every so often because this camera is actually behind the glass right at the top of the window and it does get dirty so there you go with that anyway and then the front washer uh and wipers so you pull it forward to wash and you can see you can set wipers here there's one of these on this side too so it's easy to grip and then up and down for your wiper settings on the other side, another paddle shifter here, and then you have your signal turns up and down. Your lighting is right here. You can see I have it set at auto and you can go through the other ones. Over here is your automatic high beam control and then uh, high beams back and forth. There you go, that's what I almost forgot. And then down there you can just see it. That's the dimmer switch for the instrument cluster. The instrument cluster itself is um, fully digital. So no glare, uh, because with a digital screen, you don't have to uh, shape glass or whatever. In fact, there's no glass cover on this at all. It's just the screen. So you can sync it in and do all that to keep any kind of glare from happening, which is what happens on this one, which is cool. Over here on the left, you can see you got a tachometer, and then that shows your gearing there. There's the infinity symbol. Uh, and uh, what you're doing with your transmission. So. You can go into manual mode and use those paddle shifters and then this will show you what gear. And then over here is your speedometer. So you got the speeds right here. Very, very optimistic 140. I'm not so sure that this car would do that. Could though, it's a pretty decent three and a half liters six cylinder. Down here you got uh, fuel. Over there you've got water heat or engine heat. So as far as the fuel goes, we put a lot of miles on this vehicle this week. Uh, we did a pretty decent road trip and uh, just did a lot of driving. We had the full family in the car, so five of us in here, used that third row, uh, really, really nicely done, um, and a nice setup in here. It felt really good. It was nice and comfy. So I'll go a little bit more into that, but I did a... Uh, um, it's kind of back and forth that you probably should watch the walk around video as well. So back to it. Now, here we are in the center. So right now it's showing uh, the safety systems basically. So it's showing where we are, like it doesn't detect any lines because I have nothing turned on to tell it to do that because we're parked. And then um, if I go through the menu, which you can see right there, it says push okay for menu. Okay would be this right here. So. If I push OK to get a menu, you can see the steering adjust on or off. That is what I was talking about with the cruise control. Now, if I go back, then I can go uh, down this menu by turning, rotating the little knob and look at what else is on there. So here's all the radar stuff and the cameras and whatnots. And then if I push the menu button itself, so I'm pushing this, I get more menus to go through. Whoops. I go so I can go, I can change audio sources, driver assistance settings, what's on this display, and so on. You can also change using this what's on the head up, uh, but there's really only a couple of options. Most of the time, you really just need to know your speed. Um, it also shows you what it thinks the speed limit is wherever you're located and driving. So, moving on. Um, infotainment. Infotainment in here is pretty good. This is a big touch screen. Um, you don't have to know anything to use it. It's just a, yeah, you go through the menus and you do stuff. So you can see down here on the bottom, these are more or less hard buttons. They really don't change. When you push that menu button, you end up here. 
and you can go through what there is and then if I want anything to show up whoops I did that wrong if I want this over there all right I can swap what kind oh wait I did that wrong anyway uh, you can swap what kind of clock you're looking at um, this is a luxury car so you want the uh, old school dial that's just a rule uh, but anyway here's what's going on as far as outside and so on and then if I turn on something like the map so the map display comes up and then I can uh, go through and I can figure out like where do I want to go and all of that stuff now when you have something running so if I'm on the audio screen you can see it pops up what's going on what it is over there now if I were to change this around or whatever then this would stay so um, you know it's it's a pretty neat kind of a setup um, I really like these screens I think they're pretty uh, pretty cool so yeah it's a pretty decent system this has been really rambly but it doesn't matter it's a decent system it's not the best it's not the worst it's a decent system it's all you need to know now uh, some more vents right here and then going down now we see uh, a lot of stuff so this looks really busy but it's actually simple to use this is the audio button I was using turns it on and off volume control down below that this is the heat and so on um, for volume by the way most of the time I've been using the steering wheel buttons um, because it's easy to confuse these two if you don't look down at them which means you're not looking at the road seat heating here seat cooling here you just push it and it turns it right and then you can adjust it by keeping pushing it steering wheel heat right here defrost right here um, you got your seek track tunes etc up here night mode day mode uh, Duke's lights let's see passenger airbag warning passenger side stuff uh, also this so I have the climate off but if I turn it on for a minute right now they're synced so if I change one it changes it will change the other wait if I change the they're not synced push that to sync them that's what I should have yeah anyway uh, and then you also have rear climate setups right here. So let me turn this off so it's not making noise on the mic. This is the rear climate control up here, so you can turn it on and off and lock it. By the way, when you lock the rear climate, it also locks the seat heating on those captain's chairs in the back so that they cannot it cannot be turned on and off. Basically, this is what you use when you have a bunch of little kids in the car and you don't want them just pushing every damn button and turning the heat up to like 100 back there so yeah and then down here you have your research and clean and all that good stuff so the air cleaner is cabin air filter um, that's literally what that is so now down here you got a wireless phone charger over there this is a wireless pad you got your start and stop button here so this is how you run, uh, turn the engine on and so on drive modes right here there's really only three of them or four of them uh eco oh well there's five wow i didn't ever notice that i thought there was just these four that always pop up anyway there's auto eco sport personal and snow this turns on uh or turns off the auto stop start so when you stop at a light the engine stays on instead of cutting out when it can just try to save some fuel this is the shifter now the shifter is a little squirrely you go like this I'm trying to do it so you can see what's on the thing so right now i'm in drive now if i pull into the car wash and i want to go into neutral you got to just tap it like that it's really hard to get good at that the only way to do it go back into drive the only way to do it is the way that i just did just a gentle push forward and you're done if you do it any other way if you grab this button and try to do it you you'll probably end up in reverse unless you get really good at being gentle and then park is that button on top down here you got your parking brake your uh launch control auto hill hold <laughs> uh, and then this also runs that uh but you're doing it with a command knob so you can see quick buttons here the cameras over here 
back button there and then push this for menus move it around or okay and move it around to do stuff so you know you can use this if you want if you if you would prefer a con command knob some people do i don't over here drink holders pretty decent not special not bad they're all good uh and then storage storage so this right here opens up you can see there's a usb in there a couple other things i forgot to point out the other usbs in here anyway there's a 12 volt right there under here with the, the wireless charger there's a c and an a and then there's the toggle switch to turn the wireless charging on and off um now let's look at the interior so you can see really good looking i love this it's so pretty so you got this quilted seat right here it's vented and heated of course it's this is the autograph model in case uh, you didn't know there's some wood inlay there's so you see the wood inlay across there you can see this uh so this is a soft fake leather um over hard plastic this is quilted to match these really pretty this is that fake rubberish leather uh stuff that they use on uh, more premium vehicles like this and then there's nice strip splitting everything down the middle beautiful look in the back you got captain's chairs and then there are um and then the third row one of them's folded down but there are three seats in the third row uh really really nicely done here's their climate controls back there and their drink holder and whatnot overall just a really nicely done premium level luxury car uh it for comparison if you're trying to figure out how big this thing is it's basically the same as the nissan pathfinder uh very similar to a lot of the smaller mid-size three rows that are on the market right now uh acura mdx is a good good example it is similar to most of those uh but as you can see hmm, something in my beard mustache but as you can see very very uh, just nicely done premium vehicle you have a decent amount of cargo space back there if you don't need to use that third row just a wonderful all-around setup very well done so that's it that's what i got this is the interior walkthrough 2023 infinity qx60 talk to you again soon subscribe